Great to have you back one more time. It's the Bar Room Therapy. I'm Oscar your barman, and of course the hashtag WCABRT. On this show, we have personalities from different works of life sitting right here, talking about everything they've been through, things that probably they haven't spoken about before, but one thing is common to all of them. They go in hurts, they go in damage, they go in with issues, but they come out of their stories stronger. And that is where we tap our inspiration from. That's what the show is all about. And we have such a guest. You'll get to meet her after this. Welcome back to Barroom Therapy. Now, each and every one of us has been through a phase in our lives where we were bullied. It could be in the school playground by that big boy or girl. It could be at the office. It could be at the university. Whatever the case might be, we've all experienced some form of bullying for something that we have or don't have. But the point is, we've all been there. But what happens when you're a grown woman and you still get this bullying? And not because of anything you've done, but just because of the way you look. I have a beautiful woman here with me who is a model, but shot into the limelight because she chose to take a stand, say no to bullying, and basically tell her story. Her name, Omotola Ekundayo. And she is here with me. We've been giggling, we've been laughing, we've been having fun before the cameras rolled, so she's all stiff and very professional now. How you doing, girl? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> she is... Phenomenal, guys. And um, Amotola, it's great to have you. Thank on, you on very much. Thank you. We have been chasing you for quite a while, but uh, <laughs> we thank God that you are here. Yeah. And you look great. You thank look great. You. I think I'll. My, <laughs> it's my haircut is. No, it's fit to you. It's it fits okay. me. Mm -hmm. it's, getting, it's getting too old. But anyway, I um, hope you don't mind cocktail. Usually I have, I have these nice cocktails. I'm good. You're good. Mm -hmm. You don't look like somebody that drinks a lot. No. Okay, so Omotala, yeah. everybody knows, or for those who do know, and for those who do not, you came into the limelight, the media space, social media. You put up a post that basically says that um, you were saying no to bullying. Mm -hmm. You have a history of bullying. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into that, let's toast to something. I always get my guests to toast to something. <laughs> so what would you like to toast to? Hmm. To everything, <laughs> like to successful life, happy life. To no, a successful life. and happy life. Yeah. Cheers to that. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's go back. Go back in time. Mm -hmm. You you put up a post, um, basically calling out bullies. Mm -hmm. um, yours in particular was because of um, the gap mm -hmm. in your teeth that you have, which I think is actually I feel like <laughs> slamming my my mouth on this. Just to get the same effect, but it's 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 what you have, and um, you you got a lot of criticism in in school growing up. Mm -hmm. um, but how how did is it an accident? Was it what happened? First of all, let's establish that. Okay, it was dental issues actually. Um, I ate a lot of chocolate while it was going on. <laughs> A lot of chocolate and sweet and as well. Now yes, everybody that is chocolate is now scared. Like, this is what will happen yeah. to keep. Yeah, this is what will definitely happen <laughs> to you. So I had a lot of chocolate while growing up, mm. candies and all. So while growing up, I started having toothache and the teeth take like... Decaying. Yeah, decaying. So mm. I had to remove it. So then I was very small. The mm. dentist lied to me that it's going to grow back. Don't worry, it will grow back now. Don't worry. I'm using salt and warm water. <laughs> it will grow back. And I was so hopeful that, oh, yes, my teeth will grow back. And it's now, still, we're still waiting. Yeah, we're still waiting. Did you sue that dentist? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even in the country, so I heard. Now I think it's outside also. I don't even know. He must really be good at his job. Very um, good. I don't know how you got access to so much chocolate, though. Yeah. Your parents, you blame them? I would say I blame them. <laughs> I blame myself. I always buy chocolate with my pocket money when coming back from school. Like, I knew the whole chocolate back then. From M&M to Bonty, <laughs> Bon Bon also. Yeah, I ate every chocolate that came out. And you still eat chocolate now, I'm sure. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So let's, let's go back to this. This um, dentist meeting operation happened around what age? Ten. Ten. 
And is that when the bullying started? Before 10, your life was yeah, it pretty much okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a drastic shift. So what was the first memory of, of this situation you have with your teeth and people? Yeah, while I was still in secondary school, yeah. they used to call me Sodrick. Sodrick. Like, I don't know the meaning of that, like surgery, like someone like botched, uh -huh. like went into surgery, something like that. Okay, so, the bulky, I get you. Yeah, so they call me Sodrick, they'll be like, I went to a boarding school, I schooled in Zamfara. So they'll be like... All girls or mixed? Yeah, all girls. Okay. They'll be like, Sodrick, there's one girl that always bullied me. Like, they were plenty, they'll be like, come, how do you brush? And I'll be like, are you serious? How do I brush? Like, what happened to your teeth? Even though you tell them the story in the end, they'd be like, hmm. Your teeth, did you fall down or did you fight? Or like, they say things that are really not... They're trying to, well, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah, some, like, very few, but the rest be like, they always laugh. Hmm. Like, anytime I'm coming back from class, I'd be like, ah, see that again. I think don't come out too. Surgery. So she laugh, yeah, so she like, my girls call her come for you. Then you'll be like, babe, what's up now? She not, she not talk go because her teeth don't remove. Like, it was hell, I won't lie. Many people like hmm. talk to me anyhow. Even when I went for a casting, I asked, I wanted to ask my fellow mother, like, what's going on? Brief me on what's happening. Hmm. And she just like, I was like, wow. Because of your teeth? Yeah, because of my teeth. Like. Now, I'm trying to figure out because there's a reason for, most people say when bullies bully, it's a reflection of their insecurity sometimes. Like maybe it's them not feeling confident or comfortable. In your experience, why do you think people pick people out to, to bully them? In your case, it was your teeth, but... Just to make their life feel unpleasant. Like, some people get joy in it, making other people feel bad. I don't believe in that insecurity or whatever. Some people just have joy in making you feel bad. Like, when people gather around and laugh at you, they just... Mm -hmm have that motivation to keep doing it and it makes them feel happy. That's what I just know. And how, how did you deal with this from age 10 to, I mean, to you left school? Did you just suppress it? Did you confront some of your bullies? What was your strategy? Well, anytime they did that, I would go to my dorm and cry. And I'd be like, God, why am I like this? Like, even though I want to do something, I'd be like, Baby, you no know, go feed them. You no know, go smile. Everybody will be like, God, what is this? So I'll just be in my dorm and I'll start crying. I'll be like, God, help me. Until one day, I stood up to the girl and I was like, have you looked at yourself in the mirror? You're always insulting people. Have you looked at yourself? Like, seriously, babe, like, check yourself out. You stop insulting me. And Obviously, people knew that she was not even fine or anything, <laughs> but she just kept, she had that joy, that, that thing made her popular. She like, was popular for bullying people. She was people. very popular. I'd be like, ah, that girl, that girl was your more, no good, do. like, see that, a lot of times I would sit down and think, I'd be like, when will this thing, like, when will it change? I don't know. Mm. I always think, I even went to the extent of getting a denture, but it turned out very bad because... If you look at it very well, my gum is almost joining together with my teeth. Okay. So it's not really, it's not quite normal. So when I wanted like having an operation where bailing me, oh God, no. so serious, like. Millions or? It was in thousands. It was uh, actually plenty. How far ago? Like two months back. Like yeah. I still went last year. Mm. So. When I had the prize, I still went like early this year and I was like, God, I don't have the money. So hmm. till then, eventually I have the money, then I can be doing it. But now let me just live my life how it is. I can't kill myself. So how, how did your journey into the modeling, you know, when, when did that start? It started, or how did it start? It started this year. Everything was this year, still so, very fresh. Yes, yeah, still very fresh. So it started this year. I have a very close friend of mine, Ibe. She was like, do you know you are wasting yourself? Like, I actually loved modeling from a very little age. I remember myself always watching American Next Top Model, Tyra Banks. And after they finish, they used to have some kind of training every episode. Mm. So when they finish, I go and do my own thing. Because I love Tyra Banks, like, till date, I just loved her. And I tell my mom that, oh, mommy, one day I'll be a model. Don't, don't just worry. 
until I now removed my teeth. <laughs> I was like, God, I'm not going back into that profession again. There's no need. So till this year, my friend was like, do you know you are unique? Mm. Like, we know models are everywhere, but this is your own selling point. Like, go out there, be yourself, stop being encaged in one particular place. And I was like, hmm. She always told me, like, right from time, but I don't really answer. I'm like, How long have you been friends with the bear? Three years now. Three years, okay. Like, ah, babe, go out. And I was like, no, there's no need. I don't want to go out there. They will laugh at me. People will be like, ah, what happened to you? I don't want to go. I should be like, this is your own selling point. Every model has this. They have, they are tall, they are everything. But you now, mm -hmm. this is your own selling point. Go out there and show yourself. And that's how it happened. Though. I was very persistent at first. Like, it took mm -hmm. me three years before. Like I can imagine. Yeah. But what, what I would, because you raised something about the operation. And I'll ask you this question, but you'll answer this after the break. <laughs> If you found the money to put everything in place with respect to your dentition, would you? Don't say it yet. <laughs> Still barroom therapy. We have Omotola here with us. And uh, quite an interesting, inspiring story of a woman who fought back and decided to take her life in her own arms. That could be you too. Stick around on barroom therapy. Still have the lovely Omotola Kundayo here, barroom therapy, and uh, the question still remains, if you had the chance to, or the money, the finance and the means to correct your dentition, would you? Yes, I would. Why? This well, has brought you all this fame. Why, why would you change it? Won't you now become like every other model? Um, yeah, I would, but I wanted people to know that, okay, this is how I am. Mm. Like, I don't want to be fake. Mm. I want people to know that, okay, well, this is how Omotola Kundayo is. This is my own, like, this is my brand. Mm. Let me just say, yeah. So I, want to, no, I don't just want to be a model, but to be a role model to other people out there. Because I thought I was the only one in this situation. situation yeah. And to people started messaging me, oh, thank you. Oh, I feel very inspired. I almost killed myself for this. Wow. I almost killed them. Yeah, plenty of people, like... There was a girl that told me she almost committed suicide because of how people made her feel. I had people messaging me that they had cancer and like mm. making their teeth fall out. All this had to do with dentition? Not really mm. dentition, some health issues. Okay. Yeah. So I was really quite happy that mm. I motivated people, I impacted into people's lives. So, yeah. In, in modeling, I mean, this modeling career of yours is about a year. It's not, up to. it's not up to a year. Now, you mentioned Tyra Banks, you've mentioned the fact that you've loved modeling. How, how far do you think people should go in terms of changing their physical outlook in order to make themselves happy or happier? Like maybe somebody doesn't have the right nose, they go for surgery or get a Botox. What's your take on that? How, how far? Do you just advise people to do anything they can if they can to make themselves feel good? Or there's a limit? Actually, the limit. Everything that has an advantage definitely has mm. a disadvantage. So, if you feel very bad about your appearances, and you don't have many people, they really feel bad about how they look, their appearances, mm. but they don't have that money to like change things. Change things. So I think just live your life. How God created, like created. You're just telling God that oh. The way you made me, oh, I don't like it, you did not try. So, like, mm. live your life, just be happy with it. Let people talk what they want to say, like, let them say what they want to say, but mm. live your life, go for anything you want. So, there's no need going to have Botox or lip induction, whatever they call those stuff. So, there's, mm. there's really no need, just be yourself. Who's the biggest client you've worked with? Hmm. I'm still getting there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's the biggest client you'd like to work with, modeling-wise? Oh, I love to Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks, okay. Yeah, Naomi Campbell. Mm, Kenda Jonah, Gigi Hadid, definitely. And Joanne Smalls. Like, don't worry, I'm just going to nod my head like I know all these people. <laughs> yeah, these people. But you don't, you don't think if you, if you 
Do you think you still have the same appeal if you have your surgery and change your, your dentition? Mm -hmm. You think so? Yeah. Has anyone advised you against changing the way you look? Yeah, like but... Very... <laughs> no, no, she hasn't advised me changing my look. She was mm -hmm. like, just be yourself. If I have the money in the future, maybe... When I, you have the money. Okay, when I have the money, yes. <laughs> when I have the money, I may. Like, I'm still thinking about it. Mm. That one is... But I really now begin to appreciate how I look mm. because I'm giving inspiration to other people out there that, okay, well, you could be anything you want to be in this world, irrespective of how you look. Mm. Yeah, so when I have the money, I may be doing it. So, and in, in, in this modeling journey of yours, um, I mean, I don't know if you've been to enough auditions to come up with a conclusion, but a lot of people get sidelined, discriminated for how they look. Maybe they're too light or too dark or they don't mm -hmm. look a certain way. Well, what has been your experience with, with the way you look in the industry? Yeah, I went for one casting one day and the woman just looked at me like, Okay, bye bye. She said, "Okay, bye bye." Yeah, okay, bye bye. <laughs> I was like, ah, no, I will call you back. I will call you back. <laughs> like, oh, Which basically means they won't call you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that means. I was like, oh god, this is no good. So, actually, but I thank God still yet. Mm. I just thank God. Yeah, I know we're getting there little by little. So, what forced you to put out the post that you did? Okay, well, what was what was that incident or? Actually, as a model, people think maybe you just just to take fine pictures and post them. Mm. So I was always taking pictures, mouth closed, mouth closed. And Ria, I I love that girl. Anyway, she is. I was like, go out, stop covering what you have. Like, in fact, I'm going to take a shot of you with your teeth. Let everybody know that oh, this is how you are. So I took that picture for people to know that oh. But like this, how she looks. So that when you see me, you won't be shocked. That, <gasps> Where did that come from? So she doesn't have it. So that's why I just posted picture, not for fame, not to trend. Just for anybody that sees me, like, oh, she doesn't have it. So that when you meet me in person, you'll mm. be like, oh, you are not surprised. So that's why I never knew it was going to go that far. Yeah. And who was the biggest celebrity or person that reached out to you that you're like, no way? To the head notes. <laughs> <laughs> What did Tunde say? <laughs> Tunde did not really reach out to me. Just like we posted, mm -hmm. they had like shared the picture. And I was so so happy. Like wow, I did not believe. Then Insta blog and the rest and many others that I can't even remember and I don't even know of. Mm. Yeah, people reached out to me. Um, I can't even remember. Like even it was on Vanguard or so the Punch newspaper and the rest. Like you've done interviews as well, or was it just from that post? Just from that post. Do you, do you think this is just a phase that next week it will be yesterday's news? Do, do you think what you're going through is not something that people will latch on to in terms of your courage to face face the situation? Do you think people will just yeah. not remember Motala next week? Mm -mm, no, it's not going to be like that though. Why? Motala is here and she's here to stay. <laughs> yeah, she's here to stay. Like We're making waves very, very soon. Let's make the waves together. <laughs> So I'm still I'm still concerned about what next because um, what what else are you doing now? Actually, I'm working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all I'm you're, doing. You're nine to five. <laughs> is it nine to five? No. Well, what is it? Do you care to share? Mm, just working at um, a bar actually. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you've had any suitors come your way as well? <laughs> we have to go there. You're a model. You're a no. fine girl. We can't pretend like that is not in the... <laughs> mm, no, no, actually. No, not really. So there's somebody right now. <laughs> a model I can talk now. Let's, let's talk this talk. Yeah, there is. And how... how... Where is he? Hi, what's up? <laughs> Bros, now you. How's the relationship been with, with this mystery man? Yeah, very, very fine, lovely, like, he inspired me to, like, go more. Okay. Yes, like, he has been supporting me all through. Would he subscribe to you correcting your dentition or leaving you the way you are? What do you think he would say? 
Anyone is fine with it, I guess. Okay. Still barum therapy, the Omotola one of Titland is here <laughs> with us. Um, beautiful personality, beautiful smile. But beneath that, there is pain, there is hurt. How did she overcome some of these things? We'll find out after this on Barum Therapy. Barum Therapy, hashtag WCABRT. We have Omotola here with us still. Hello. And um, it's, it's, it's actually refreshing to hear, to hear the, the painful part of, of this. For some reason, there's beauty in your pain. Um, even though we're looking back now and we're chatting about it like it's just, but <laughs> you, you went through a lot of pain, um, depression, and I just wanted to find out when people come or when people come to you, if anyone should come to you and they're telling you that they feel they've been bullied, for you it was your tooth or teeth, um, another person it could be at the workplace, it could be marriage, relationship, whatever the case might be. Well, what has been that thing that has kept you grounded, that didn't make you lose your way, even though you were in pain? I would say God, one. And I had a few friends that were on the right track that led me. So it's good to like make company with people that are bright, mm. that are positive, not people that are always giving you bad vibes. Like when you make friends with people that are there, Mm. tend to be like on the right track. They are always positive. They always encourage you. Even though things are not going well, they're like, don't worry, it's going to be fine. So I think that's what really made me like conquer all this. And when again, God, mm. I was always praying, God help me, see me true. Let me not kill myself because of these people. So yeah. I'm okay. sure there was a time where you, 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 you lost a bit of faith. Yeah, plenty of times. You... So if there's no God for that period, and I mean, what do you lean to? Or who do you lean on? I would see myself again. Mm. Like, I would tell myself, don't worry, you can go. It's going to be hard. Mm. It's not easy because modeling, I won't lie to you, it's competition. Yeah. When you turn, you see the next person going forward, you'll be like, ah. Let me go home. <laughs> why will I reach this place? But again, there's always that you are, that's why you're a human. You always doubt. You'll mm. be like, how will I reach there? But again, you tell yourself that I can. If this one can, then she has two heads. No. So if you tell yourself you can do it and you are determined, not just sitting there and be telling yourself you can do it, or you'll be like, oh God, help me. But you're not making waves, you're not making moves. Mm. You can never reach there. You just be there. You will not shift. So that's the thing. So you make efforts. Me, I don't know about anything body, but me, I like praying very well. So you make efforts. You pray and you believe in yourself. You go there and let people mm. see you. Yeah. What mm. else do you want to achieve apart from the multi-million dollar contract signing? Um, what What is the next thing for? for Motella in terms of what you want to achieve. You have your confidence now, so I'm mm -hmm. sure you can take on the world. Ah, a lot. I've always dreamed of working for Victoria's Secret. Like, I'm wow. being... Yeah, I always dream. <laughs> and so Vogue we have some magazine. Lingerie, some lingerie coming up. Uh-huh, and um, Vogue magazine. Anytime I see, because I love Winnie Harlow too, because mm -hmm. She doesn't really care about how she, like how people see her, she's going. She does herself. Yeah, like she's there, she's out there. So I see myself working with the Secret one day. With the wings on the couch. Definitely an angel. Yeah, we are getting there one day. Do you, do you, I mean, is there anything you won't do in the industry? I'm going nude. Okay, you won't do that. Mm -mm. For the right price. Tara Bank tells you to do it. <laughs> nah, that's not me. <laughs> that's not my calling. <laughs> nah, no. What is your thing right now? Just living my life, being happy. Yeah. And pushing forward to make mm -hmm. waves and to be out there. Yeah, that's my okay. thing. Okay. So, to those of you out there making waves, pushing on, um, Omotola came out. She's literally almost a year in the industry. But it's not about the length of her experience, it's about the depth of her faith in herself. And 
basically telling you that whatever the discrepancies might be, whatever the shortcomings are, whether physical or internal, emotionally, you still have a shot at it. And uh, she's here. She's, she's a phenomenal, phenomenal woman. And uh, it's, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you very for, much. For being here on Motola. Thank you. Um, hmm, Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. I'm still picturing... <laughs> I'm still picturing that. That would be very interesting. Yeah. So Tyra Banks is watching. Just look at this camera. Yes, yeah, so Tyra so Banks. Your so Tell her what you want. As in, I want to work with you big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Omoto, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, well, that's it on barroom therapy today. I, I, I also have a dream of being a Victoria <laughs> Secret model. <laughs> Don't ask me why and how. And well, that's it on barroom therapy today. Like Omotola, we are all going through some type of bullying. For her, it was because of her dentition. For you, it could be something else, at the workplace, in a relationship. But pain is pain. Depression is depression. Whatever form it comes, it needs to be taken care of. If you're a bully, please stop it. Get your joy from doing something good, not something bad. And if you're being bullied, this is the time for you to just say, enough is enough. I love myself. I'm more than what the bully says I am. And more importantly, you have the strength and the right to love yourself. So please do. Till next time in Barroom Therapy, I'm Oscar, your barman. Hashtag WCABRT. Check me out, same time, right here.